simulation? I don't see what your problem with quantum mind theory is. It seems to be the only thing we have in science that can really explain the mind. Um, there's like a number of reasons. I mean, we have five reasons for this. Uh, first of all, we have the Cartesian ego. We know that you know, I'm an I, and of course we can't cut an I in half, so therefore logically this concludes that whatever the I is made of has to be fundamental, and so therefore if we were to assume that everything in the world is made of one substance and we don't sort of default to substance dualism, then automatically, you know, the, the mind has to be something that is fundamental in the physical as well, which automatically brings us to quantum mechanics, since that's the most fundamental thing we have. That's the first reason. second reason is uh, Gödel's theorem. We can understand statements such as 1 plus 1 equals 2, which are very simple, but we can't prove this uh, with, you know, algorithms. And so we have this, this uh, the, the famous Penrose argument, we obviously do understand this, though, and so this the only way this can be possible is if there's some non-computational process going on, and the only place we see that is at the quantum level with quantum probabilities. Third one, and this one should be, this is pretty obvious, is holonomic brain activity. Uh, you cut, like, a brain in half, you could take one hemisphere out to do this with epileptic patients, and assuming that it's just, you know, chemical activity only on a classical scale, there would be no reason, we, we would automatically assume that cutting one half the brain out, you'd have random memories disappearing just all of a sudden, and that's simply not the case. It's the, the memory is spread out non-locally, which is, you know, non-local behavior is quantum mechanical in nature. Thirdly, we have free will. This also requires non-computable behavior, or pure randomness, and um, the only place we have that is at the quantum level with the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, and the probability wave. And then lastly, um, we're going to have the synaptic activity requires quantum tunneling. I did a, uh, I can't, I can't find the paper on this unfortunately, I wanted to put this in the sidebar, but I, I'll see if I can dig this up later. However, it requires, um, syn uh, qu synaptic activity requires quantum tunneling in order to work. And they've actually shown this, this was in a uh, paper by John Eccles, if someone can possibly, knows what this paper is, they can dig this up. Classical, classically, particles cannot pass the dendrite barrier and go on to the next barrier. It just it does not work that way because it's it's too thick, and so it requires automatically a form of quantum tunneling to pass to the dendrite barrier. So now these are pretty obvious. I mean, these are I don't know how you could explain any of these things without using quantum mechanics. Now I'm going to comment here about kind of the motivation behind this is behind opposing many quantum mechanics quantum mind theories is not science at all, it's uh, the limit of materialism in uh, philosophy. And uh, the problem with this is, is you know, we have Daniel Dennett doing these deflationary accounts and so on and so forth. They simply don't understand the problem. They, they're, they're not really addressing the issue of mind at all. They're sort of denying the mind-body problem exists in the first place. You know, we have evidences such as the Cartesian ego. We know that a priori. We know we have free will because we're self-aware of our own free will, and then we also know that we have such things, we know, you know statements such as 1 plus 1 equals 2, even though mathematically, or rather logically, we can't compute these. And these 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 are simple facts that we have to deal with. This is, this can't be denied as evidence. This is what we're trying to explain in the first place when we say we're trying to explain the mind. And so any any theory that explains the mind has to address these issues, and I just don't see any serious activity to try this with limited materialism. It, it doesn't, it has, it's kind of using actually a category or in a way. It's trying to explain an empiri purely empirical domain. Granted, science is empirical, but it has to, we're doing with, trying to study the mind with science, we're going to have to have something that's going to overlap with the philosophy domain and, you know, work with both, be, be compatible with both philosophy of mind and neuroscience, and eliminative materialism simply doesn't do this. It, it just sort of denies that there is a, a mind-body problem, really, and then ignores half the evidence. So, well, that's all for now. See you guys.